Hi guys, I am Professor Tracy Daniel and I want to be the first to welcome you to History 1301, which is American history from pre-colonial times up until the Reconstruction period, which ends in the year 1877. So before I start, I want to get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way. So one, of course, this is an online course. We will not be on campus. So I am recording this and recording, we'll be recording your lectures uh, from my home. So in that, uh, because they uh, are building houses right next door, uh, you may hear a little bit of banging uh, and some nails and things from time to time. Unfortunately, uh, that's not something that I can control, but know that if you are hearing things, you're not crazy. It's just the background noise. Also, with background noise, I am a proud, proud dog mom. I have two dogs. Uh, one is a chihuahua named Ears, uh, and the second one is a lab mix named Maggie. Uh, so you may hear them bark from time to time. You know, I want them to be quiet, but they have minds of their own. So if you hear um, so if you hear them, just know it's not you. You're hearing my pups and it's totally okay. So let's get to some history, right? So uh, this is History 1301. In this first video, I'm going to be going over the syllabus. I'll tell you a little bit about myself so you'll know who the heck this woman is who's going to be teaching you American history. Um, I'm going to show you some of the books that we will be going over, your textbook as well as uh, supplementary texts that you will be going over or uh, reading in the course, um, as well as some course expectations. Because of course, you know, it's an online course. Uh, it can be overwhelming, so I'll tell you exactly what you can expect in this course. So again, I am Tracy Daniel, Professor Daniel. Um, I have a master's degree in history. Um, I am very passionate about history. History is so important to me because it really, I will say, history is who we are. You know, if you want to really discover who you are, you kind of look back to your history. Um, and we see this, honestly, every day. Even when people describe themselves, even though you're American, you may say, oh, I'm German or I'm, I'm Scottish. Even though technically you're not German because you were not born in Germany, you don't live in Germany. And really a lot of the time, uh, you've never even been. But however, it's that history that, I, that you can identify with that really forms your identity. So history is very important. Um, also, history is pretty objective. In this class, we will be doing lots of reading because I think it's very important to study for yourself. Um, a lot of the times, especially in this highly uh, polarized time, a lot of people have opinions about certain books or about certain documents, but unfortunately those with the opinions sometimes have not actually read uh, what they're talking about. They've not read the document. They've not read the book or the piece. And so in order for you to really understand history and to really understand what's going on um, during these historical moments and in these historical historical events. It's imperative that you read for yourself. That's the only way we can get knowledge is if you study for yourself. It helps you to form your own opinion um, and a lot of things will surprise you. So uh, the syllabus is online, uh, obviously on D2L. An easy way to get to D2L, I mean obviously you're on it now, is d2l.lonestar.edu. Your course will be uh, divided into modules. Each week you will have a module and within that module you will have things that you need to complete. So as long as you complete um, your activities by the end of the week, everything will be due. Your module will be open, you know, on Monday and everything will be due the following Sunday by 11.59 p.m. Please turn in things on time. So in saying that, I am going to go to the syllabus. So I have it on one of my pages here. So if you see my eyes going off to the right, uh, it's because I have my document open. So feel free to pause if you want to. Um, I can also give you a few minutes to pull up the syllabus, okay? So I'll give you a few moments uh, while Maggie is kind of talking upstairs. I'll give you a few moments to pull up your syllabus. They always seem to bark when I'm doing something or when I'm on the phone or recording because, you know, they're like kids. 
So History 1301. So I am your instructor, Tracy N. Daniel. I put my middle initial because it is in my email. So if you email, uh, if you only put my first and last, you will not get my email. So it is Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y dot N as in Nicole dot Daniel, D-A-N. I E L at Lone Star .edu. I can be reached at this email. I do not have an office phone because of course we are not on campus and uh, I don't have an office on campus. I have a workroom. So office hours are by appointment. If you want to speak to me, um, I do have a Zoom account. Uh, Lone Star also has WebEx. I'm very comfortable. I'm actually more comfortable with Zoom. So we can schedule a Zoom meeting. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever regarding the course. Just uh, ask for a Zoom meeting. Just send me an email and I'll get back to you. The department chair uh, this year is Robert Holmes, PhD. He can be reached at robert.w.holmes at lonestar.edu. And our interim dean is Matthew Turner and his email address is also in the syllabus. So this is U.S. History to 1877 and I am teaching three courses this semester. So you are either enrolled in History 1301 section 5031, 5038, or 5039. So really try to find out which one of those you're in because I will not be recording three separate lectures for each class. It's one lecture, it's the same class, so just be mindful of whatever section you're in, okay? Um, this course is three credit hours. In order to be enrolled, you have to have had uh, English th uh, 0305 or 0316 or uh, placement by testing. So obviously, you might probably don't have that issue because you are allowed to enroll in the class. So here are your required materials for the course. So you have your textbook here. It's called Give Me Liberty. I um, like this textbook. It's written by, you may not be able to see it because of all of the light, but it's written by Eric Foner. And this year they got a new edition. So this is the sixth um, edition. Um, if you are buying your books used um, and you get the fifth edition, I personally don't mind. However, with the books, it also comes as a bundle. Make sure you get the bundle because it comes with this book called Voices of Freedom. So this is your textbook where you're going to be getting information, okay? This is where the lessons and the lectures come from. It is imperative, repeat, it is imperative that you read this book. Um, during my lectures, I will be highlighting things in the chapter, but it won't be everything in the chapter, okay? So you need to read this book. This is your textbook. This is the Bible uh, for this course, okay? So on the syllabus, it says bundle with Voices of Freedom. So Voices of Freedom is the uh, text here, it's the Voices of Freedom. And so I really like this book because what it does is essentially go chapter by chapter, each of the chapters in Voices of Freedom correspond with the chapters in your Give Me Liberty textbook. So what this book gives you are primary sources which I will explain uh, in another lecture, uh, it gives you primary sources from the chapter, but the chapters correspond with the chapters and give me liberty. So for example, chapter one in your textbook is titled A New World, um, and chapter one in here is also titled A New World, but there are just several uh, documents that you can go over. So there's a document about the results of colonization. There's a document that has uh, Bartolome de las Casas. We'll be going over that one. So as I was saying before, I don't mind if you're buying these books used um, to save money. 
I totally get it. I personally don't mind if you get the fifth edition. Um, I still have my fifth edition. However, just be mindful that, especially in the Voices of Freedom book, when they get new editions, sometimes they put additional sources. So make sure if um, on the tentative outline on your syllabus, I put the titles of the readings that you'll be having. So if you, if your Voices of Freedom book does not have those readings, get together with one of your classmates. Um, and see if uh, they can shoot you a PDF of it or something. Um, as the semester goes on, as you know, by the time this class starts in the announcements, I will have um, a link where you can use an online version of uh, the Voices of Freedom as well as the Give Me Liberty text for uh, free for I think three weeks. But I'll go over that. And again, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email to tracy.in dot daniel at lonestar.edu all right so those are your textbooks very very required uh you will have two books that you will be or uh, that we will be reading they are not novels so in your book review please don't say that this is a novel that we read it's not a novel these are not novels they're not fake they're not fiction but that's what I so the first book that you'll be reading is called Revolutionary Mothers. I have to find my copy of that book or I too will be ordering another one off of Amazon like you guys. Um, it's by Carol Birkin, uh, Revolutionary Mothers, Women in the Struggle for America's Independence. So this book is going to highlight the role that women played uh, in the founding of America, in the American Revolution. A lot of the times we tend to tell uh, history from the perspective of men. And we forget that there were so many other people that played significant roles uh, in this country. So we'll be reading that book. I've also included the ISBN numbers for um, easier finding. The second book you'll be reading is called um, Seneca Falls and the Origins of the Women's Rights Movement by S uh, Sally McMillan. So get this book as well. This will be the second book that we'll be reading. Revolutionary Mothers, of course, takes place uh, during and before the Re uh, Revolutionary War. This book is about women's right uh, to vote. So we'll be reading this one second. Okay. So an overview, the course catalog description of this course, it says this course is a survey of U.S. history from pre-contact societies through reconstruction. Themes to be developed include westward expansion and globalization. Westward expansion is one that we are really going to uh, hit on. We'll also be talking about slavery. Uh, one thing that I am proud to introduce this semester is the 1619 Project. We will be going through the 1619. 19 project uh, through the course. It will be pretty early on in the course. Um, there's been a lot said about this, uh, this work, this publication, um, but it's time for you guys to read it for yourself. Okay. Read it for yourself. Don't just believe what people are saying about it. Read it for yourself. So uh, we'll be talking about slavery, Native Americans, um, and religious and social changes. We'll be viewing this through the lens of, honestly, colonization and imperialism because our history has a lot of it in here. Um, your outcomes for this, at the end of this course, you should be able to create an argument through the use of historical evidence. You should be able to analyze and interpret primary and secondary sources, as well as analyze the effects of historical, social, political, economic, cultural, and global forces on this period of United States history. So we are, uh, this course, read through the core curriculum statement um, according, or uh, this course is supposed to enhance critical thinking skills, communication skills, uh, your idea of social responsibility as well as personal responsibility, and you'll get all of that experience in this course. So because this is an online course, uh, you will be required to use uh, the computer because everything is online. So in an effort, our, in our efforts to keep students and employees safe in response to COVID-19, students will be expected to utilize computer technology while enrolled in classes, certificate and or degree programs within Lone Star College. So uh, my specific requirements, uh, you must have access 
to a computer with internet capabilities, with internet connection capabilities. Because throughout this course, you will be required to complete uh, assignments on the school's online learning platform called D2L. Um, you will also be required to watch videos from online sources. Uh, course assignments include, but are not limited to, quizzes and tests, which will be online, discussion board posts, online video resources, um, assignment submission. So you need to have um, a computer with internet um, capabilities. So um, attendance. Attendance is required in this course. If you want to do well in this course, you need to be able to log on um, several times a week to see what's due and to work on your assignments. So I suggest doing a little bit um, throughout the week instead of waiting until Saturday night or early Sunday morning and trying to turn in your work. Um, attendance will not be a grade. However, your success in this course will be a direct result of your attentiveness um, and participation throughout the course. No longer attending the course um, or telling me that you want to withdraw, it does not constitute withdrawal. In order to withdraw, you have to fill out um, a change schedule form. Um, the official day of record for this semester is September 4th. So if you're not sure um, if you want to be in this course, September 4th will be a good day to kind of aim at, you know, withdrawal, even though that is not the withdrawal date. That's just the official day. Um, assignments. This course will be broken down into a number of modules. And so within each module, students will have reading materials that you have to read. So you'll need to read the chapter, right, from the Give Me Liberty textbook. Um, and you'll have related assignments. So usually a quiz, a discussion board post, maybe a video or an article I want you to listen to, or even a podcast. So um, everything will be within that module, and your module is due at the end of each week on Sunday by 11.59 p.m. Late assignments will be accepted with a five-point deduction per calendar day, not business day. So if something is due, I mean, I will probably never have anything due on a Friday, but if something is due on a Friday, if you don't turn it in until Monday, it's late Saturday and Sunday, right? So make sure you turn everything in. Um, you guys will be given four tests throughout the semester, and this includes the final. So you will have three exams and the final. Uh, the final is not cumulative. The final will just include uh, wherever it will just leave off, you know, wherever we left off, rather. Okay, so if we leave off and we had chapters 12 through 15, your final will be over chapters 12 through 15. I don't go all the way back to the beginning, okay? Um, throughout the semester, students will complete scheduled online quizzes on chapter material. Um, they'll be included in your modules, okay? Book essays. This is the fun part that all of you guys uh, surely love. Because this course will be relatively writing intensive, typically uh, before we went online, I would have two book reviews. Um, this semester, because we're online, because you have to do discussion board posts, uh, so that will take up a big bulk of your writing. You will only be doing one book essay and it will be over Revolutionary Mothers, which is the first book that we will be reading this semester. All papers uh, need to be uploaded as a PDF or a .doc, so a Word document or a PDF, um, into the D2L Dropbox on a specific day and time. Uh, it's below. So papers are due into D2L by 1159 p.m. That will serve as the official deadline. Papers which are past due and uh, past due date and time will be late. Also, um, if it is submitted on the correct day, but after the specific time, you'll receive a half letter grade deduction. Um, papers submitted the following day or after will receive a 50% reduction. So make sure you get these things turned on in time or turned in on time, especially since I'm telling you guys so early on. Okay, so 
how to write a book review is underneath here. So I put literally everything I want from the first paragraph, the next three to four paragraphs, the paragraph after that, as well as the last paragraph. I'll also put up a book review sample, okay? So um, and I know that sometimes when you're reading this, it's like, uh, not quite sure uh, what you want. However, I'll put up a sample and I want you to look at the sample, uh, read the sample, and the how to write a book review at the same time. Put them next to each other so you can see how this is formulated and formatted, okay? Discussions. So modules will also include discussion board posts to be completed by the student each week. So I will provide a topic or a question or a primary source uh, document for you to be read or to be read rather. In order to receive full credit, listen to this uh, very carefully. In order to receive full credit for the discussion post, you must answer the question fully, meaning every part of the question and in complete sentences. Please do not answer it like it's just on a piece of paper. It needs to be incomplete sentences. All discussions, uh, unless I say otherwise, all discussions must be written in essay format, meaning there must be an introduction paragraph with a thesis statement, uh, a body paragraph, and a conclusion. Okay, you can have more than one body paragraph, but it needs to be introduction with a thesis, so telling me what is the main point of this document. Uh, your body paragraphs need to back up your thesis, and your uh, closing paragraphs need our closing paragraph needs to bring it all together. Okay. Also, you must read and respond to two of your peers using five or more complete sentences. So not just, yeah, I liked your opinion, LOL. Sorry, you need to read and respond to at least two of your classmates and it needs to be in complete sentences, okay? At least five sentences. Makeup assignments. So uh, with makeup assignments, they'll be given on an as needed basis because you have so much time to complete this. Each module is due week by week. So if you're doing it and you're checking D2L and you're working on it through the week, it should not be um, overwhelming. Students will have one week to complete module assignments. If you are unable to complete the assignment due to circumstances outside of your control, please notify me as soon as the incident or the issue arises, okay? Plagiarism. Guys, don't cheat. All work that is done and or submitted in this course must be your own work. Uh, when everything is turned in, I format it to where it automatically goes through a plagiarism checker. So not only do I see what percentage of your paper or assignment is plagiarized, I also see the sources where you got it from. So please don't plagiarize. It is too easy for me to find out where you plagiarized. Um, during testing, um, you need to keep all electronic devices um, away from you under your desk away from your person um, any uh, material used from outside sources ie websites books journals must be properly cited if plagiarism or cheating occurs in this course you will be given a zero for the assignment with the possibility of an F for the course uh, and you could be referred to the academic dean. So do not cheat. Please go through all of this. Um, if you are caught cheating on an assignment or a test, you will receive the grade of a zero on that assignment. So don't cheat. Just do the best that you can. There is no need to cheat in this course. So again, don't cheat. I put the web address for the student handbook. So if you have any other questions, you can read that for yourself. Um, electronic devices, obviously you will have to use electronic devices in this course. If you own a mobile device, uh, such as a laptop, tablet, or cell phone, you may use it provided that you are accessing, of course, uh, course related content or taking notes. Um, final exams. So for final exams, you will have a final exam on the date that I give you. Um, there is a final exam schedule. 
However, the schedule is, it still appears as, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday course combinations at times. And of course, this is online, so I will have that your, um, if you scroll down, <laughs> if you scroll down on there, you will see when your final exam is. Okay. Grade determination. So your grades will be determined by the following. You will have exams that are worth 40% of your grade. So you guys will be given four exams throughout the semester. Exam dates are listed in the tentative outline below. All exams. Make sure you hear this. So there are no surprises. All exams will have a written essay portion and unless otherwise um, specified by me in order to receive full credit it must be written in essay format meaning it has to have an introduction with a thesis body paragraph and conclusion okay incomplete sentences tests are 40 percent of your grade Quizzes, you will be given weekly quizzes on D2L, one chapter at a time. The quizzes are worth 20% of your grade. You will have one book review. Uh, book reviews will be submitted into a D2L drop box. Um, you will have one book review. Make sure it's a good one because that book review is worth 20% of your grade. And you will have discussions. Discussions will be in the module. Um, in order to receive full credit, you need to answer fully and in complete sentences and all discussions must be written in essay format, meaning, again, that it must have an introduction paragraph with thesis, body, and conclusion, and you must also read and respond to two of your peers using five or more complete sentences, and all of that equals 100%. Your letter grade assignment is pretty self-explanatory. 90 and above is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, 60 to 69 is a D, and anything below 59% is an F. So we are going to try to stay out of F uh, territory this semester. I know a lot of you guys will often say, I don't like history, but I'll get to that in just a little bit. I need to explain this very long syllabus. All right. Syllabus disclaimer, another very important thing. It is my right to modify the class schedule when necessary and cover course topics as I see uh, or as I deem necessary to meet the learning outcomes. Therefore, the syllabus is subject to change. The syllabus disclaimer is like in two or three different places in here. So um, I put the tentative instructional um, or above the tentative instructional outline are just some important course dates. Class starts on the 24th of August. The official day is uh, September 4th. Your midpoint day is the 30th. Now this is very important. Your withdrawal uh, W date, withdrawal date. The W date is November 9th, meaning if you want to withdraw from the course and get a W on your record, you need to um, withdraw by November 9th. Anything after November 9th, whatever grade you have, it's just the grade you get and it will impact your GPA. Uh, the lab Labor Day holiday is September 5th through 7th. Uh, Thanksgiving is the 25th through the 29th. So um, I have here my tentative course outline. I'll just use a few minutes to go over this because you guys can clearly go over it. Um, so you'll see right above it, I put GML means give me liberty. Um, I might put read GML chapter one or GML chapter two. That means to read that chapter in the Give Me Liberty textbook. And VOF stands for Voices of Freedom, which if you recall is this book here that has supplementary materials. It has uh, primary source documents, okay? So um, you will be having readings from both your textbook and the Voices of Freedom. So on week one, the 24th through the 28th, you will be reading chapter one in Give Me Liberty, which is titled A New World. So this chapter is about a pre-Columbian and pre-colonial um, contact. So we'll be talking about the culture of the peoples who lived here, as well as a first introduction by Europeans. So the European group that we will be talking about are the Spanish. So the Spanish are the first to colonize the New World. Uh, one thing that I learned when I was in grad school, one thing that Dr. Shaduri always said was that people speak the language of their colonizers.
You speak the language. We speak the language of the nations, of the countries, of the uh, colonizers, right? So North America was colonized by who? The English. So we speak English. However, in Central, South, and Latin America, uh, they were colonized by the Spanish. So they speak Spanish. However, you'll notice that in Brazil, they do not speak Spanish. In Brazil, they speak Portuguese because uh, it was colonized by the Portuguese. So in this class, we're going to change the way we view things. We're going to change the way we see things and really see things, uh, honestly, for a uh, first time it can seem like, right? So uh, first lesson for today is that people speak the language of their colonizers. North America was colonized largely uh, by the English, especially when we think about the United States of America. Colonized by the English, we speak English. We'll be talking about uh, Latin and South America, or I will say South and Central and Latin America, the first chapter. So we'll be talking about uh, Spanish colonization as well as, you know, yeah, Spanish colonization. There we go. So for example, um, I'll give you some examples on how to read the syllabus. Um, so week one in module one, you will read uh, from Give Me Liberty. You'll read chapter one. And this, then you will go to your Voices of Freedom book, this book, and you will go to Voices of Freedom 8. Each reading is, um, let me see, each reading is numbered and the numbers continue through the book. So you should be able to go to VOF, oh, it's a new thing, so I have to, it's not VOF 8, it is VOF 3, so let me change that now, Okay. Sorry about that, guys. VOF3, because that's already beginnings of English America. So that is titled, and I put it here, uh, Bartolome de las Casas on Spanish Treatment of the Indians from History of the Indies. You'll be reading this document. So the first part here, if you can see, Okay, so the first part is like an introductory paragraph. It gives you some information. Then it actually starts here. So read this introductory information. It gives you some context. And context, honey, context is everything. But it's not very long, right? It's like maybe a couple of pages, right? It's that page, this page, and this. Then there are some questions. Go over some of these questions, right? Answer the questions at the end, right? So after that, you will have a discussion over the reading, over uh, Bartolome de las Casas um, on D2L, and you will have a quiz. And that's pretty much how this class will run. Okay, uh, in week two, you'll go read, uh, it's about the beginnings of English America, and you'll read Give Me Liberty chapter two. You will read an excerpt, and I put the excerpt here um, from The Idea of America by Nicole Hannah-Jones, who is from the 1619 Project. So I want you guys to read an excerpt, or maybe I'll put the, the entire thing. Um, I'll probably put the entire thing because again, context is everything. Um, you'll have a discussion over the idea of America. There are some questions. I think for one of the courses, I already formatted the questions. They're really, really good. Um, and then you'll have a discussion and a quiz. So these discussions are really to um, initiate some deep thinking. I am challenging every single one of my students to think outside of the box. It's amazing. So that is the challenge for this semester is to think outside of the box and to study for yourself. So uh, please go over this by yourself uh, in detail. I try to make due dates pretty um, obvious at the bottom of each week. I put that uh, the date and time that the module assignments are due. I've also highlighted exam dates as well as when your book review is due. Your book review, your first and only book review on Revolutionary Mothers is part of module six. So it will be due by 10-4, October 4th by 11.59 p.m. M. So I've highlighted that throughout the syllabus as well as exam dates and going down to the bottom. If all goes well, your final exam will be online and open from December 7th at noon until December 11th at 1159 p.m. Okay, please complete the exam within this time frame. 
Also, um, don't start an exam or a quiz and walk away and think you can come back. They will be timed. Um, so you will have one chance to complete your assignments. So don't start them and go away, right? Um, you have to sit and complete your um, assignments or your exams and quizzes during one setting, okay? Anything else? So please read the rest of the syllabus information. It has information on FERPA. So if your parents or guardians email me and they want to know how you're doing in the class, I can't tell them anything because you guys are grown. You are enrolled in the class. They are not enrolled in the class. So uh, I can't and will not uh, give them any information. Also, just for a little housekeeping, Send your emails from your student email, okay? Please don't send your emails from your Gmail or your Hotmail or your Yahoo because I may not get it because there's been so uh, much phishing and such with the Lone Star system. It kicks a lot of those emails out so I don't even receive them. So please, please, please make sure uh, you uh, send everything through your student email, okay? Uh, my communication policy is that I will try to get everything or respond to you guys in 24 hours at the latest 36 hours, but the uh, aim here is 24 solid hours uh, is how much time it's gonna take me uh, to respond to your emails. Sometimes I'll respond to them a lot quicker, other times it may take me a little longer, but you know, we're all in this together. So that is the syllabus, 35 minutes. I'm going to log off now. Um, that is your syllabus explanation. I'll be coming back at you in just a bit to give you some information on myself and why I love history so much. See you soon.